Sunday, amen, but truly it's a beautiful day outside, and uh, we're just thankful for this day that God has created, because truly it's the day, and you've heard me say this before, it's the day that we've never seen before. We're pretty good about labeling things, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but sometimes we forget that uh, in the day that we do awaken, whatever it's Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or whatever day it is, it's a day that we've never seen before. So I'm thankful and grateful for uh, being uh, here today, and um, we're just making adjustments like everyone else until we have the time to get together and have fellowship with one another, and that time hasn't come as of yet, uh, but we believe that time will come, amen. So I am thankful and grateful for those who are uh, part of this broadcast today, and we're excited about uh, you and spending time with your family. Uh, because uh, sometimes things happen in a way that we can slow down and not only slow down, but take the time to reflect and also uh, just look at the smaller things in life that sometimes we take for granted. So my name is Ron Hairston. Amen. If you don't know who I am, uh, our ministry is called Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. Uh, it's where we provide the knowledge to build a people with a heart after God. And uh, we're just learning how to walk by faith and not by our own emotions or our own will. Uh, because we know the faith of God, amen, is, has to deal with the word of God. And that's where Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So uh, we're just thankful and grateful for all those who are part of the ministry. Amen. Some we know, some we don't know. We want to thank you also for taking the time to just uh, uh, also go to our website and hit the donate button. We thank those who have been given to Jim Ministry. And that's our uh, generational Enoch ministry for the youth. And we thank God for your uh, donations and also financial support that you've been given. Also prayers, amen. And thankful, thankful, thanks, thanking you also for uh, giving to the ministry during these times. We don't want you, we don't want you to forget, uh, especially if you're a member of Kingdom Faith and National Christian Center, to take the time to give your tithes and offering uh, because there's a blessing comes in your obedience concerning that. And you've heard me say that our tithes and offering being sown today will entitle us to receive, amen. And then we give a list of things that we're entitled to receive because of our obedience to God's word. So I want to kind of remind you of that and uh, continue to do that after the broadcast. Uh, please take the time to uh, send your uh, offering, amen, because we do need that to keep us moving, amen, and moving in the things of God. So we're just excited. I hope you're excited. Things are changing, as I said before, but they'll change real slow, as you can actually see that. So uh, I, I believe God is challenging our patience right now and the patience, amen, that we're enduring without complaining because it's easy to complain. I hope you're hugging your kids and spending time with them, taking the time to talk to your husband, to your wife, or if you're, by your, if you're alone, amen, call somebody and talk to them, encourage them, and let them know how appreciative of you are of them and don't just be stuck in your own little world. So please keep that in mind. And I am thankful and I'm grateful, as I said before, for you being a part of this broadcast. And I hope you have your Bibles with you. I want to take time to get your Bible or your electronic devices. If you are if you have your Bible and your electronic devices, you want to make sure you get that also. And I believe this word is going to bless you. Uh, so I know that you'll be blessed. I'm going to be blessed also from being able to share the word of faith with you. As Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. So let's uh, pray as we get involved into the word of God and see what he's speaking and saying to our hearts as a body of believers today in Jesus name. Now, Father, we come before your presence and thank you for this opportunity that you've given us uh, to minister to these kings and priests that are called by your name. And you said, even in your word, as we've already said, as Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we need a word, Father, that will help us, amen, govern our perspective of how we see things and not according to the natural way we see it, according to your will, which is your word. So I'm praying that you anoint me today, God. I yield myself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, think through this mind of mine, amen. Speak through these lips of clay and cause a word, amen, and help us to identify where it is that we need to be inside of your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about being in the kingdom, amen. We talked about uh, Nicodemus and John chapter number three. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to do a recap here and talked about us being born again into the kingdom of God. Remember I said before I got saved in a, a natural brick church, but I got born in the kingdom. And the kingdom, amen, we talked about the kingdom of God, amen, is not a government, it's not a, a democracy, it's not a dictatorship or a communist party. The, the, the kingdom of God, amen, is, is has to deal with the government. And that's very important uh, because if we don't understand, amen, what we've been born into, we can't operate out of it. So that's why we take the time to kind of educate and help people to understand that even though we get saved in the church, we've been born into the kingdom. 
So and the being in the kingdom, amen, means that our address has been changed. Something that's happening not only inside of us, but God also wants to work something in and through us. We talked about also the kingdom, amen, has talked about us producing good fruit. Remember John 15, we talked about there where Jesus says, my uh, my father is the, uh, he said, I am the vine. He said, my father is the husband tree. And it says that we also, we're the branches. So we have the father taking care of Jesus. Now Jesus, through our relationship with Jesus, the father takes care of us also. So developing the right mindset is very important because if we don't have the right mindset, uh, it keeps us from um, receiving all that God has for us in this life as well as the next. So what we're going to look at today, man, we're going to look at one scripture to start us off, and it's over in the book of Philippians. And Paul was as writing to the word, the church. The word church means ecclesia, called out ones, or a group of believers. Remember what Jesus said, we're two or three together in my name, there I am in the midst. So the church, amen, consists of people. And it's not just, you can't be the church by yourself. It's either two or three or either more. So here he's writing to, in the book of Philippians, if you turn there, amen, Philippians chapter number two. In verse number five, we're going to start with that one verse there, and then we're going to build from that. Today, we're going to be talking about living in the authority, living in the authority. And that's very important because you have to sometimes ask yourself the question, whose authority are you living under? Because some people don't realize this, being in the kingdom of God, being born, puts us in the authority of God and according to his word. So now we have to become familiar to that. And how we get familiar to the word of God, we have to have a book. And the book is called the Bible. So, I mean, or either it's on your electronic devices. And now we got to have somebody to help us, amen, to instruct us, amen, how to understand what it means to be positioned in God and come under the authority of his word. Now, Philippians 2 and 5, it says, says let this attitude, I'm reading out the Amplified, let this attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, and let him be your example in humility. Now, that's powerful because a lot of people don't understand that what Jesus is modeling, amen, is submission to God the Father. And because he's, he's a son, he's submitting himself to the authority of his father. So you can see where we're going to get this message from today and what we're talking about come or living in the authority, living in the authority. Amen. Praise God. So remember, Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So he wants us to come into a relationship with the word of God through Jesus Christ so we can understand that there are privileges that come to us as believers as we submit to God daily under his word. Amen. Now, the thing here, amen, as we begin to understand this, that Jesus is the son of God and he is the first fruits of obedience. Remember, the first son that God created was Adam. And he now, because of his disobedience, amen, it, it, it put a curse upon the earth. It caused many, amen, to lose conscience of God and even many establishing their own self-will in terms of how they need to live. But when Jesus came, he came to reverse all that so we can learn how to live, live life under the authority of God's word. Now, Jesus is the first fruit, amen, as I said, in obedience. Not only that, but Jesus preaching and exhibiting the kingdom of God, amen, so that it is safe to say that the kingdom of God begins now. The kingdom of God begins when there is absolute obedience to God's, to God or God's word. Amen. Remember, we read a scripture last week over, I think it's over in, um, I think we're in Ephesians, I believe it talked about where the church is built upon uh, the prophets, amen, the apostles and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And uh, remember, we talked about there's two covenants in the Bible. Uh, some people are still living out of old dispensational truths that are not affected to the body of Christ today because there's a new uh, covenant, amen, that's called, amen, the kingdom of God. And we don't have the right message because we don't preach from the kingdom of God. A lot of times we're preaching from dispensational truths uh, that tickle our emotions, but we don't go into the real understanding of who we are in Christ, what we receive in Christ, and how to appropriate the word of God in everyday living. That comes through Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So the abundant life is to live a spirit-led life by God's word and living under the authority of God's word and in submission to his word. That's when we give reverence to God and we fear God. And there is reverence to God, honoring, not ignoring what he says, but he has the ultimate, amen, authority over our lives through his son, Jesus Christ, which you're learning how to submit to. 
Now, there's another scripture I want to uh, read before I do that. Uh, what we was talking about that Jesus preaching and exhibiting the kingdom of God. So it is safe to say that the kingdom of God begins when there's absolute obedience to God. And not only that, but no voicing of opinions, uh, no uh, uh, present, uh, presenting uh, of reasoning or no murmuring or re reveal, uh, uh, revealing or, uh, you know, just kind of complaining. Amen. So the word of God, amen. Sometimes it challenges me like it challenges you. But God is not looking for your opinion. He's looking for your submission and yielding to that, even when we don't. You know, some things in the Word of God tells us to do is very difficult and uh, it's kind of hard to do, but that's what he gave us prayer for. God, we pray that God would help empower us to be able to do his will. And uh, He, and if we pray according to his will, he said he would do that in, in terms of what we needs to be done. So turn to Ephesians chapter number four, because remember, we're talking about living under the authority. And our example is Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. So there again, we can't really serve God with having a proper mindset. And that's important. Remember, I said this before, when we get saved, God's not looking for us to perfect our flesh because you can't perfect the flesh, but you can mature the flesh. Maturity has a lot to do, do with your understanding and your understanding has to deal with you learning what to submit to and what not to submit to. Now, Ephesians chapter number four, let's go there for a minute. And Ephesians chapter number four, I like this because Paul, amen, is writing, amen, and he's talking to the church again, and the word church means ecclesia, called out once, and he's giving them instructions. This is the New Testament uh, uh, teaching that's good for, not only for them back then, but for us today, and it still speaks uh, to life to us if we submit to the word of God. And he talks about, amen, first of all, in the, uh, Ephesians 4 and 1, and it says, I therefore, and this is the Amplified Bible, I therefore, the prison of the Lord, appeal to you and beg you to walk and lead a life, it says, worthy of divine calling, to which divine calling to which you have been called with behavior, it says here, that is credit to the summing to God of service. Amen. Now, that's important. He says, therefore, Paul, in his relationship, he takes it personal because remember, when you move from religion, amen, to, to relationship, it's going to become personal. And it has to become personal because if it doesn't become personal, amen, you're not really operating in what God says he's requiring from you, amen. Now, it's important for us to understand, as we read the scripture, that Paul was talking about walking. You can't walk unless you have the right mentality, and the mentality has to do with the renewing of our mind. Now, the truth be told, you cannot renew your mind just in going to one Sunday service. You can't renew your mind. <laughs> I, amen. And some people may get upset, but don't get upset because I'm just telling you the truth. The renewal of the mind, where we're practicing what we call God consciousness. God consciousness is just being aware that God, amen, not only what he's done for me, but who I am in him and even what he requires for me daily, how to operate. So the renewing of the mind is something that we do daily. So we want, we don't want to build self uh, consciousness. We want to move from self consciousness to God consciousness. Amen. Praise God. Now, the other thing, uh, as we move forward, he talks about uh, that we've been called, amen, and basically calling. The calling has to deal with a couple of things here. None, number one, once we've been called, we've been born again, God now wants to do something in you and through you. And this is all established by you being familiar with your Bible. And the Bible, amen, is an instrument that teaches us, amen, about God, the creator of heaven and earth. Not only that, but how he has formed man, and man is in need of a savior. Therefore, he brings redemption through his son, Jesus Christ, and atonement. And because we have atonement and redemption, now we've been forgiven, and now we've been put in right standing with God. And now because we're in right standing with God, now we're part of the, what we call the citizenship of the household of God. And because we're part of the citizenship in the house of God, now God requires certain behavior traits to be formed inside of us. And that's by us educating ourselves according to the word of God. So Paul was talking about here, the, amen, there should be, amen, a change of behavior once you receive Christ. So therefore, uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. The becoming process is not something that's instantaneously, it's day by day. We grow in, into some things, we grow out of some things, amen. Uh, we mature in terms of stopping doing certain behaviors, certain uh, attitudes. We learn how to do that uh, just by choice, and that choice is submission and obedience to God's will. 
So we've been talking about living under the authority, amen, in the authority, basically the authority of God's word, amen. So here, amen, as he reads this, as I read this in Ephesians 4 and 1, he says, he said, the calling to which you've been called, to, which behavior that is credited to the summing of God's service. So our serving God, amen, has to do with serving one another, husband wife, children, amen, authorities, whether at work, amen, or at home or at school, amen, or whether you're driving down the street, driving your car, amen, there's all kind of authority things around us to follow up, to test us whether we're going to submit. When you come to that red light, amen, the red means stop, yellow means what, caution, green means go, amen, that's a principle, it hasn't changed, it's still the same today, yesterday, and every day, you can leave from one state to another, and even over in some countries, they have adopted the same principle. So therefore, it's through maturity that we stop. We stop because we've been told, amen, that red means to stop. Amen. We've been taught, amen, when yellow, amen, it's mean caution, amen, and green means go, amen. That's not a feeling. That's a principle uh, of behavior that somebody has instituted out of a law and that we have submitted to it, not out of force, but out of what? Obedience to having that knowledge, and that makes us mature when we stop, makes us immature when we don't stop. And doesn't mean that we're not citizens of the United States. It just means that we have to become mature and understanding that is a willful surrender to doing what's necessary so that we can show reflection unto those citizens that are around us. So here it says here that Paul is talking about that we have behavior that is credited to the summing of God. Now, when we are called, amen, we're called to serve God the Father through our behavior. Amen. Some people want to serve God by producing things that help other people, and we should do that too, but God's not going to excuse your behavior because he's looking for you to be mature because God's not looking for perfection, but he's looking for maturity. Maturity means the renewing of one's mind, changing one's mind. Amen. Now, the text above shows us that the absolute love that we have for God will be established, amen, through a change of behavior towards God and also towards others. Now, turn to Romans, if you would. Turn to Romans 8 and 20. And I'm hoping you're getting something out of this today because remember the question is, amen, that we're learning how to live in the authority of God. And that's a powerful because right now, when you're not under the authority of God in his word, amen, it, show, it shows that your love has not been completed towards him. Because the Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's not legalism. That's the showing of respect of his authority. He sent his son to model that for us. And not only that, but there's privileges that come when we come under the authority of God. Amen. Now, here it says here in Romans 8 and 29, and I want to read this in the Amplified Version. It says here, for those he foreknew, for whom he was a word and love before him, he also destined for beginning, for ordaining them to be molded in the image, it says here, in the image of his son and share inwardly, it says here, with his likeness. Amen that we might become the firstborn among many brethren. So here the process, the process for renewing the mind, amen, is a place of humility and submission to his will. And when we submit to his will, that word of submission through we receive, it begins to build in us certain attributes that we didn't have there before because it's Christ working in us, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Now, as we move on, the change, the change of or Christ likeness starts with us being able to renew our minds daily. We talked about that. Uh, after we receive in Christ, everyone who's received Christ has this mandate on our life. You cannot continue to remain the same. You're supposed to be changing, changing when we give process to reading and submitting and praying to God's word. There's a change that will take place inside of you. And it's for the good of your family. It's so for the good of, of your husband or your wife. Amen. It's good for your mate that you get ready to marry soon or haven't married. It's good for even those who you work with in terms of employees. It's good for those, amen, in terms if you're a, a manager over employees and, or you own your business, it's good for everybody because ministry means to serve. So we don't serve God and to get, we serve God out of reverence and respect to God. And that's the beauty about, amen, being in the kingdom of God places us under the authority of God. And this is the thing. Now we want to move from that understanding that because we're under the authority of God. This is the good part here. I love this part right here. And this is, has to be that when we're under the authority of God, what happens is, is that, that God is, wants to build in us what we call spiritual growth. 
or spiritual growth points to spiritual knowledge. You need to write this down because this is good. So spiritual growth, amen, means that we obtain to spiritual knowledge. Spiritual growth, spiritual knowledge. Spiritual growth, spiritual knowledge. See, this is all about, it's, my God, it's all about what God is saying uh, according to his kingdom covenant promises that are found in his word that relates to you and I as being citizens of God that puts us above, amen, the natural law of how we live our life because we're now under the king's word and we're part of the kingdom. Therefore, there's scriptures that come to mind that I can actually quote to you. You can look at it later. Uh, the Bible talks about 2 Timothy 4 and verse number eight. It says, physical training is of some value, but spiritual training is valuable in all things and holds the promises of this life and that which is to come. So when we submit ourselves under the authority of God or learning how to do that, God promises us to be involved in our everyday life. Now, the everyday life has to be with God submitting, hey man, what we call grace and provisions, peace and prosperity. All those things come, amen, to us because we're under his authority and it's his responsibility to take care of us and not we take care of ourselves. That's the difference for being in the authority of the world. The world is taking care of their own selves. It's me, myself, and I, which I'll call the unholy trinity. But God wants us to come under God, the Father, God, the Son, the God, the Holy Spirit, so he can prove himself to be, amen, not only our Lord, but also our Savior to produce what we call provisions, amen, peace and prosperity, which is all part of what God has for us. And those things we should expect when we understand that spiritual knowledge is really all about being aware of our rights and privileges that we have as being in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. You've been saved. You've been born in the kingdom of God. And yes, you may go to your natural, your local church, uh, 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 whatever that may be. Amen. But being in the kingdom of God simply means that you're a citizen of heaven here, here in the earth. And not only that, but God says, listen, if you learn how to mature in that relationship, on a daily basis by being more God conscious and coming under the authority of God's word, there's nothing that God won't do for you to see that what he sees that his God child is taken care of. Amen. And not only that, but grant you provisions, amen, so that he can show forth his strength working in your life and doing things for you that you can't do for yourself. Boy, I tell you, this is good word today because what God's trying to remind us, you don't have to fend for yourself. Jesus has already made the way for us as we come under the authority of his word and submission to his will out of not legalism, but submission. And his submission, not my will, but your will be done. And when his will be done, it always brings peace, prosperity, and joy in terms of what he has for us. Now, that's important because in the book of Proverbs, it says, if fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That fear means the reverence God. The reverence God is to acknowledge God for who he is and also the plan that he has made for us as individuals. And now that we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, amen, I can truly say that if any man be in Christ, I am a new creature, you're a new creature, and old things, the process for change is upon us. It's not immediately, it's day by day. So therefore, we don't have to be in condemnation or guilt or something that we've done wrong and behavior traits that we have. If we continue to walk with the Lord, continue to pray and seek his faith, keep our faith in the Bible, remind ourselves, amen, that some attitudes we just have to change and we can't, what we can't change, we pray and ask God to help us change those attitudes and to be mindful of that, then God begins to bless us, amen, in ways that we can never, can ever imagine because that's what God does for us, amen. Now, the thing here as we move forward, I love this because uh, there's another scripture we're going to look at, which is a powerful scripture, one of the scriptures I just love, amen, it just speaks life to me and it's found over in 2 Peter chapter number, um, let me get over there first. I think it's 2 Peter, let me make sure, amen, glory to God. It says here in 2 Peter chapter number 1, amen. And also, uh, yeah, 2 Peter chapter number 1. Now, this is interesting because remember, this statement that I made is so important. The enemy knows that once a believer gets saved or born again, he, he wants to keep you locked down in what we call self-consciousness. He doesn't want you to move from self-consciousness to God-consciousness. Because when you move to God-consciousness, you're going to move in this area called kingdom covenant promises. And the promises of God are yea and amen through Jesus Christ. But sometimes the promises comes along with us understanding there's instructions that come along with that. 
There's one scripture, Psalms 84 and 11, that said, the Lord God is a sun and shield to those who trust in him. The Lord will give grace and glory and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up right before him. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things will be added unto you. Matthew, I mean, Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that comes to God must first believe that he is God and he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Each scripture I gave you, amen, has, amen, a prerequisite or information that's tied to something that we need to do in turn and showing our respect to God and our submission to his word. And when we fulfill that, then what opens up now on, our, on God's end to move on our behalf because we're now showing reverence and submission to his will out of love, not out of legalism. So you need to hear that today because God can't force us to do anything. We, we stop doing certain things or we pray because we get to pray. We don't pray because we have to pray. We pray because we get to pray. We have a right, amen, to come to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy and help in a time of need. And therefore, prayer is not a privilege. I mean, prayer is not work. It's a privilege. We get to pray. Amen. And when we get to pray, sometimes praying is not so much God answers answers your prayer. Sometimes prayer is that God, amen, does something inside of you, amen, to quench your fear, amen, to silence those emotions that you have, to, to move upon you in a way to let you know that he's still in charge, even though it's not looking the way you think it needs to look. Oh, my God, this is some good word today. I'm hoping you're hearing this today. Now, I want to get over here, amen, to 2 Peter chapter number 1, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. I love right, reading this. If you get a chance, you need to read 2 Peter chapter chapter number one, amen, verses all the way. You can need to read the first whole, whole chapter because it's all good. But listen to what it says here. Simon Peter, a servant and the apostle, a special messenger of Jesus Christ to those who have received and attained equal privileges. Now notice, I said this before, spiritual knowledge is you being aware of your rights personally, your rights, your rights, amen, and privileges of being in the kingdom of God. There are rights and privileges that come to us being in the kingdom of God. It ain't woe is me, amen. It's what, what God's going to do for me, praise God. It's not whether I'm going to make it. No, he's already made it for me, amen. So this is important because when you don't know the rights and you can't execute the right or the authority that God's given you because you've given the right, amen, to have that authority. But if you don't understand that there's a requirement, amen, or prerequisites that's tied to us submitting and coming under the authority of God, amen, out of our own free will empowers us, amen, to stand in his power and not our own power. My God, thank you, Lord. So here it says here, uh, Jesus Christ, to those who have received and attained an equal privilege of like precious faith, ourselves in and through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then it says, the second verse, may grace or God's favor, somebody ought to say favor, glory to God. And then it says, now God's faith, and somebody say peace. See, all these comes with us having spiritual knowledge, amen, or spiritual growth points to spiritual knowledge to be aware that these things are being made away, available for us now, not when we get to heaven, but right now. You heard me say that a lot, a lot of times. I'm not getting wet. I'm not looking to get healing when I get to heaven. I need it right now. Amen. I need financial breakthrough. I don't need it when I get to heaven. I need it right now. Amen. But you got to have faith for that, understanding that these things are made available for us now through Jesus Christ. So this is what he's saying. Make grace in God's favor, peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, he says there, all spiritual prosperity, my God, and freedom from fears and agitation, passions and moral conflicts be multiplied, he says, to you in full personal and precise and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. I can tell you enough, amen, when we get saved, God says now it's time for you to mature, amen, to mature and come to understand your rights and your privileges that you have received in me being in Jesus Christ. You have rights and privileges that you can use here in the earth that keeps you, amen, from, amen, walking around as if you don't know what's going on. People that walk by faith, it changes your perception of how you see things. Yes, we, we see this virus, amen. Yes, we, we, we still have those, those, those uncertainties that comes upon us, but yet we have the word of God also to guide us through all this, amen. Remember I told you before, having faith is like, you know, having an umbrella. It's raining outside. You can't stop the rain, but you can keep the rain off of you as you're walking through, amen. And that's what faith will do. Faith in God's word, coming to the authority of God's word will help you walk through, amen, this time and period that we're in right now. Now, we can walk through it with our heads held up high, knowing that we're 
a king's key is, and we're under the covenant of his son, Jesus Christ. And not only that, but he's given us promises. He has not abandoned us because he's in heaven. His will is now being made in the earth and in your earth as you learn how to submit to his will. God, God, this is good word today. I'm hoping you're hearing this, and I know you are. Praise God. But listen, let's read a little bit for, further. I'm going to stop here in a minute, but I'm not going to be able to read all this, but you need to read all this because it's going to go down to even talking about fruit and behavior where Paul talks about, amen, we do that not because we have to, we do that because we, we show our love and our respect to God. And then there's benefits that come along behind all that as we yield to his will, not my will, but his will being done. The third verse, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that request and suited for life and godliness. My God, and it says through the full personal knowledge of him who have called us by and to his own glory. And it says excellent virtue. My God, by, by the means of these, he's bestowed on us his precious, exceeding great promises. There are some promises that have not been fulfilled. Amen. That still need to be filled. There's promises God has made you and I, amen, amen, that he's going to give us daily as we walk this walk this earthly walk that we have, their promises God gave us, amen, as we go along the way, amen, and that's a good thing, it says it promises so that them, so that through, through them you may escape the flight of moral decay, rottenness, corruption that is in the world because of covenants and lust and greed, and become sharers of the partakers of the divine nature, my God, you're a king, you're a king's kid, yes, you've been born earthly, but you've been born again, and because you've been born again, you're in a spiritual kingdom called the kingdom of God, and because you're in the kingdom of God, Jesus has given us promises, amen, and the promises are tied to our submission and obedience to God's word, and because we yield and come under the authority of God, amen, what happens, amen, we are now understanding that we're not only under the authority of God, but now it activates the word of God to be manifested in our life, so be encouraged, amen, know that the time is coming that we will all get together, Amen. And I'm not talking about when we get to heaven. I'm talking about in a couple more weeks, praise God, we're going to have a, a hugging party somewhere. You need to have a hug. Go hug somebody. Lay your hands upon somebody. Tell somebody how much you appreciate, how much you miss them, because this is how we show our love for God. You cannot love God unless you love people. And we're in the process of learning how to love people. It ain't easy, but God said he'll help us do it. All things are possible to them that believe. So this word today, amen, we're talking about living in the, living in the authority of God's word. Amen. Living in the authority, because once we come under the authority of God's word, God's word will now become uh, activated in our life in such a way that he'll begin to move things on your behalf. Now, you may stand in need of some things here. Amen. Some people are out of work. Some people are trying to get to unemployment. Amen. Some people, amen, just trying to learn how to pay their bills from day to day. Amen. But the one thing that's good about all this, if you've already been under the authority, God, God has got all that covered. Praise God. He got it all covered. If you're not under the authority, authority of God and you're still in need of these things, you can come under the authority of God and he'll see that those things are taken care of. Amen. What I love about God, amen, he will not cause his children to be homeless. He won't call us, cause us to be ignorant. Amen. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and life have it more abundantly. I'm so glad that we're kingdom kids. Amen. We're in the covenant by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. I'm excited, amen, that the promises of God are now, and they say amen, if we can arrive to it as we learn how to renew our minds, amen, and come under the authority of God. Whose authority are you under? I'm hoping you're under the authority of God, and I'm hoping you haven't moved from that authority because you have, that you're in trouble. You need to come back under the authority of God so he can begin to do things for you that you can't do for yourself. So I'm thankful, amen, that God has blessed us, that he wants to do something spiritually, naturally, physically, financially, emotionally in your life. So we believe this is a time for change. It's a time for, time for us to reflect. But the door is getting ready to open up, and we're getting ready to move and be able to do some things, with the hopefully with the right mindset, because we're now and we'll always be under the authority of God. So we just praise God for the word of God today. I hope you got something out of the message today. If you've been blessed, you've been touched by it, pass it on to somebody else. I do want to pray, though. I want to pray, amen, for those who are struggling, amen. Part of our job as believers, we're supposed to intercede and pray for others, and not only put our prayer, put our prayer in action, amen, if we can get to pass out food or to someone who needs it, amen, or amen, money or resources that those who need it, because we're supposed to touch them with the love of God, amen, and we believe that we can do that. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the word of faith today. Those who have been receiving the word of faith today, we thank you for covering us during our time, covering our families, covering our children, amen, covering our, 
our, our, our elderlies or all those who are shut in, God. We thank you that the power of God is still present and your spiritual kingdom is still here on the earth. Jesus, as Jesus prays, and not my will, but your will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it's already done in heaven. Father, we bind the spirit of fear and doubt and unbelief. We, we bind, we take authority or we, we cast it off of the hearts and the minds of those who may be listening today that by your word, amen, we're already healed and your word will bring provision. Your word will bring protection. Your word will bring peace. And we say, be it unto us, unto us. We pray that you, we invite you in all areas of our life, spiritually, naturally, physically, financially, emotionally. We ask for a divine turnaround, Father. Those who need employment, that you open the door for that door to be, uh, uh, be created and open up, God. Those who need promotions and those who need wisdom concerning the resources that you've already given them, that you invoke your power upon them and help them to move Move to that dimension of receiving all that you have for them. And most of all, God, we thank you for your divine protection, God. You said your angels, amen, they accompany those who fear the Lord or reverence the Lord. And we give you praise for your work and the Holy Spirit's work, not only in us, but upon us and around us through it. This we pray, this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. You're blessed and highly favored. You better say that you are so, because it is so, because that's what the word of God says. And our faith is in what God's word says, not in what we feel, not in what we think, and not what other people say. Amen. His word will have the last say so concerning our lives. So be blessed, be highly favored. Amen. Don't forget, amen, at the end of this broadcast, amen, if you haven't uh, had a chance to sow your seed, amen, amen, please take the time to do that. And we do appreciate your offerings. We see your offerings coming in. Amen. We appreciate that online. Amen. And, and there's different ways you can do that. You can either go to www.kficc.com. Amen. And look for the donate button. Or either you can do a Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. That's P.O. Box. Amen. Um, let's see. 30704. Uh, that's Gahanna, Ohio. And that's 43230. Again, as Kingdom Faith, if you're mailing it now, you're mailing it checks to Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, and that's Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, P.O. Box, amen, 30704, that's Gahanna, Ohio, and the zip code is 43230, and also if you're doing uh, the cash app, uh, that's Kingdom, uh, the dollar sign, Kingdom, and then after that is Faith, I-N-T-L-C-C. So if you're looking for that information, it is on our web page. Amen. Not only that, if you're looking for um, uh, after this broadcast, it's, it is on this web page also on Facebook. So we love you guys. Be blessed. Uh, know that we've been praying for you. I know you guys have been praying for us also. I hope you're uh, taking walks. Amen. Getting out of the house. Amen. Taking care of your, uh, your things at home, things that have been broken. Now you can fix them. Amen. Reading that you need to do, whatever you need to do. Amen. Use this time wisely because there'll be a time coming where you'll be sitting at work saying, I wish I could be at home. Praise be to God. All right. You guys be blessed and highly favored. We'll talk to you soon and we'll just look forward to, amen, seeing you next week. And remember, Jesus is Lord over all. God bless you now. Amen.